Hello, my name is Paul C. Dwyer, Security GRC and Cybercrime Advisor. Today we're going to look at a sample DDoS attack. Okay, a typical scenario involves a botnet herder. This is the individual that controls the botnet of zombie computers, that's the network of infected computers. You will control those via a command and control server and communicate with that command and control server via a number of proxies in order to disguise his identity um, and protect uh, him from uh, facing the rigors of the law. A typical scenario is there's a website online with access from good users and that botnet of zombie computers will be controlled via the command and control server by the botnet herder to perform a number of different types of vectors of attack and you'll find on YouTube I have separate videos in relation to describing the different types of vectors of attack and so on. However, in order to create this, the first thing they have to do is to infect a computer. So how does that happen? Well, first of all, they have to create a virus. And this is far easier than you can actually imagine. Um, a simple search on the internet, whether on Google or YouTube and so on, will find lots of different tutorials telling you actually how to do this. This isn't a tutorial, but this is just a demonstration of what it actually looks like. So here, what the first thing I'll do is I'll create a virus. So I do this by customizing the virus software. So I click on the exe file, and the first thing it does is, if we notice, my PC has detected that this is a virus. Okay. Now I'm going to ignore that because it's my virus and I know that it's not going to actually cause me any damage or any harm. And I'm going to start putting in all the configuration uh, uh, values that I need to do to make this a specific virus that will put those machines infected by it under my control via my control panel or via my um, command and control server. So I'll ignore that. And it's asking me for the uh, destination of my control panel. So I put in paulcdwire.com. I have a folder there that I'm using for this demonstration. Next value is for the user agent. I'll just put in default. Frequency. Uh, so I, ha this is how often I wanted to communicate. I'll say every 15 minutes I want the infected machines to check with me for new commands. Mutex string, I can put in anything. Install path again, I'll go for the default value here. Secondary install path again, I'll go for the default value. All very simple and straightforward. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now all I have to do is get people to click on that. And obviously there's a thousand different ways I can do that and distribute that exe and uh, get people to inadvertently click on that and infect the machine. They'll be none the wiser and their machine is then under control. Every 15 minutes it will communicate back to my command and control server looking for the next commands I'm going to give it. Let's look now at what the command and control server actually looks like. Okay, so we'll go into that. So I visit the actual GUI software, and this software is easily available to anybody on the internet. It takes about five to ten minutes to install. I put in my username and password. I log in. And here I am, successfully within my command and control server software. So this is effectively, um, if I pause there for one moment and, and show you that, what I'm, what I'm demonstrating here is that there's zero bots online. In other words, I have not infected any computers. I am simply in the command and control server here. But if I had infected computers, the number of bots or the number of zombies would come up there. And that's the number of machines that I have under my control. But for the purposes of this demonstration, um, I have not infected any computers in, in, in uh, for this demo. Okay, so the first one I look at is a loader attack. So I just simply click on loader, and what this loader function does is it allows me to bring the address of a website that I want to load up. So let's say, for example, if I had 500 uh, zombies on my botnet, and I type in the the uh, the URL of your website, um, this will load your website on each one of those machines, um, and so on. So I, ca I can uh, uh, pick a number of criteria here. You see that I can uh, select by... Um, uh, for example, the uh, number of bots that I want, and, and I can just simply drag across and say the number of bots I want to use. Do I want to report out of this? And I simply click on load if I want that to go. The next one is a UDP flood. Again, I just simply put in the target, uh, the IP address that I want to attack via UDP. If I have a specific port number, I can enter that too. Um, the duration I want to do that. The strength of the attack is, is, is uh, just by sliding across the scale there. And the same with the number of bots. And I would simply click on attack if I want to attack that site there and then. Then all of those 500 bots or those 500 computers would start attacking that particular site. 
Okay, so let's look at a TCP flood. Again, very similar. I simply type in the address I want, the port, the strength of the attack, the number of bots I want to use, and so on, and click on attack if I want to attack on that. So I cancel out of that, and let's look at a HTTP flood. So this is bringing down a website very simply. Here I simply put in the URL of the web address I want to bring down. In this case, I'll use an example of aircom.e, one of the largest websites in Ireland. Um, I put in the uh, duration of the attack, for example. I could put in, say, three hours. This is in minutes. Uh, interestingly, what, what some of the most famous uh, DDoS attacks uh, only go on for maybe three to five minutes. Um, and that's enough to actually people to know, look, these guys can take us down. Every time we put up our head, we're knocked down again. They're for let's uh, give in, let's pay extortion or whatever it happens to be. They tend not to go on for hours and hours as some people may imagine. Again, the strength of the attack just by uh, sliding across the scale. Then the number of bots I want to use. And I would simply click on attack if I want to launch this attack. Okay, so that's what a command and control center looks like um, from a, a graphic user interface uh, uh, perspective. So I hope you found this uh, video both useful and valuable. And by all means, please visit me on paulcedoire.com. Um, you can contact me on LinkedIn or on my blog at securityprinciple.com or, or via Twitter.